or tonight's subject line or topic of discussion will be bringing people home. A little bit over two weeks ago, the ACLU of Wisconsin sent a letter to various stakeholders throughout the state asking them to begin to reduce their prison and jail populations through various means. Um, we've heard back from a few of those stakeholders and one of the most frequent questions that we, one of the frequent questions that we continue to hear or be asked is um, where would these people go? Um, what services are out there for people? Um, and we mentioned a few organizations that are out there helping folks or helping the reentry population and we referenced those organizations, but I thought that this was a, a conversation that we need to have so that folks can become more aware of the organizations that are doing this work, and not only organizations that are doing this work, but hear from these individuals to see what it is that they need to scale the work that they're doing and serving the reentry population. So we're, going, we're joined tonight by um, two great guys, um, Anthony Cooper Sr., um, who is the Vice President of Strategic Partnership and Reentry Services um, from Nehemiah in Madison. And we're also joined by Executive Director of Project Return here in Milwaukee, uh, Wendell Ruska. Um, we're going to hear from both of them, and they're going to speak about their respective organizations and other organizations throughout the state um, and how folks can support them. So if you have any questions, please hold your questions to the end and uh, we will try to get to your questions as quick as possible. Um, whichever one of you guys want to go first, um, Anthony or Wendell, whichever one, um, you, you, you guys are up. I can go first, I guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Unless you're wanting to go, Anthony, I'm I'm fine with following. No, 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 go, no go ahead, go first. I'm fine with that. I, I was kind of, I was like, all right, I'm just waiting to hear who's going to say what first. So, but go ahead. There's no problem. Okay. Well, um, <clears throat> I got to tell you, uh, it's it, it's an absolute honor to be here tonight and stuff to talk with you about resources that are going on here in Milwaukee, what we're doing at Project Return, uh, <laughs> the support that we've gotten in the community. It is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and it's great to be able to uh, uh, reach out and to, to work with different organizations, including Nehemiah and, uh, as well and stuff and things that, that are going on in the community. Project Return is a 39-year-old nonprofit organization. We're located here in Milwaukee. Uh, we exist to help men and women returning from incarceration with the reentry with the reentry issues. So, really, what we try to do is try to help individuals on their on their direct needs so it really depends on the individual that comes to us at the point of entry where they're needing us is what we're going to work on with them um obviously in the era in in the the, the difficulties we're dealing with with the coronavirus and the covid 19 and uh other things that are going on in our communities here and stuff like, like that and stuff uh that presents new new issues new ways in which to address this reentry issue for our clients but I want to preface everything I say by saying we've been working for at least 10 years, if not longer, with Wisdom and with the Rock Wisconsin campaign and with a lot of different entities to be able to try and curb our, 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 the issue of mass incarceration in the state of Wisconsin. We've been working hard to try to make it so that um, people who are incarcerated that should not be incarcerated are not in the institutions and back in our communities so when we all say that uh with the COVID 19 and with the epidemic that's, and the pandemic that's going on in our nation here and stuff the reality is these people should never have been in the institution should never have been subjected to the the challenges and the 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 peril that is the the pandemic that is only going to be a mass pandemic in our institutions. We can do better than this, and we truly believe this and stuff. So Project Return has been working on the front lines of this since the, the inception of the Rock Wisconsin campaign, which is probably going on about 15 years now, trying to change the way in which we look at incarceration, trying to get individuals who do not need to be incarcerated into the community, into uh, stable structures and stuff so that they can be successful and so that we can help those people through that process. And 
you know, uh, I was asked to be able to talk about what we do particularly and what other institutions, whether other organizations uh, that are similar to Project Return are doing to be able to, cur to curb uh, this mass incarceration, to be able to help those in individuals returning from incarceration. The work of Project Return has not changed despite uh, this uh, uh, mass pan pandemic that's going on. We still exist and we are still working with individuals on an individual basis to help them with the reintegration process, to help them with the reentry process, to help them so that they can be successful, so that they uh, um, are going to be successful and that they're not going to be returning to our, our prison facilities and to our institutions across the state of Wisconsin. That is really dependent on the individual and is completely um, on them what they're needing help with. So it could be helping it with employment assistance and, and employment opportunities and stuff. It could be alcohol and drug abuse treatment and support programming. It could be just um, um, supportive communities and supportive networks and stuff coming together to be able to help the individual be successful with their reentry. What I have been absolutely amazed at through this pandemic and through the crisis that we're dealing with is how people in our community are coming together to try and figure out how they can help people who may not have the resources, who may not have the ability to be successful on their own and, and stuff, and to be, be able to provide those networks through non-traditional means, which is really, really exciting to be able to see. We have a circles of support programming and stuff, which uh, the circles program is designed to be able to help individuals get a supportive network around them and stuff to be able to be successful with that reentry network. Obviously, with COVID-19, we are not able to meet in person as a group because these groups are typically uh, 15, 20 people, if not more. But utilizing technology and utilizing avenues like Zoom, as well as uh, conference calls and other avenues, uh, Skype and whatever it might be, we've been able to continue on with these uh, supportive circles and providing the supportive network that many individuals are absolutely, is absolutely necessary for individuals to be successful. And that outline, uh, that ability being able to um, talk about what's going on in their community what's going on with them and themselves and be able to express what's what, what, what's really happening and be open and honest about who they are uh, we are always exploring new avenues with this and stuff we have uh, over this past uh, couple of weeks actually really uh, involved those processes and that technology into some of our group settings and stuff and we're hoping that, that will continue on for the duration of this crisis and hopefully it will not be that long. On top of that, we um, have also, the, the case managers and the work of the Project Return are, are very committed and dedicated to helping the individuals who are returning from incarceration uh, with their direct needs. So um, our case managers are still working with individuals on their direct needs, on their direct issues and stuff that are going on in the office and stuff. Obviously, on a, on a uh, not quite the full extent of what we were doing before and stuff, but still able to be helping the individuals with what they're dealing with uh, on an individual basis. The other thing that is really, really exciting to be able to see what is happening here within our community and stuff is um, a program that we've been involved with for a number of years now, a few, a few years here, uh, called the uh, food share employment training program, the FSET program. We are a partner organization with that and stuff. So we're working with Maximus in Milwaukee. We're also working with ResCare in Waukesha and then we're seeing to be able to get people hooked up with the FSET program. The great thing about the FSET program is even through this crisis and through the social distancing uh, that we're, we're encouraged to, to partake in and stuff, the FSET program can be a tremendously impactful and pro a program for individuals returning from incarceration. Especially since, as of two days ago, April 1st, the restrictions on the FSET program have been laxed quite a bit. So we are able to sign up people who have actually been kicked off of the FSET program because of 
failure of some participation of, of some employment participation within the program in the past and stuff. So we're looking to be able to re-engage those individuals as well as be able to get those individuals re-signed up and, uh, um, and more involved in the offset program than what they have been before and getting these programs. The offset program could be great, absolutely phenomenal in this time frame where we are all on lockdown or on a quarantine because it could get the individuals the training prior to the lockdown or the, uh, um, the quarantine lifting while still getting the food share benefits. And then once the, the lockdown or quarantine is lifted, we could be getting the individuals right into um, training programs, employment training opportunities that would be able to get the individuals into higher paying and more sustainable jobs in the future. So these are the things that we're working on within Project Return. I'm very, very excited to hear about what Nehemiah is working on and, uh, as well uh, in other parts of the state because I think we're all in this together and stuff. So I, I'm, I'm excited to be here. I'm thrilled that uh, folks are, are, are participating in this call and stuff. And I, I, I'm looking forward to any kind of questions and any ways we, we can help on a, on a further basis as well. And I, on that, I will stop talking and let other people talk because I'm sure that y'all are tired of hearing me talk. Thank you. Thank you, Wendell. And, and yeah. that's the reason, you know, for this discussion is that we just want to be able to answer the question of those, even, you know, folks in the general public that ask the question, what, where would these people go? What resources are available for these people? Um, we want to be able to answer those questions and we want to be able to provide the organizations that are doing that work so that we have all ends covered. Because if we're asking for um, mass release, um, we should also have a, a, a great deal of uh, organizations lined up to help these people. Um, and with that, I'll, I'll pass the baton to Anthony. Hello, everyone. Um, it's, it's such a pleasure uh, to, to be here. Um, I'm Sean, I wanted to thank you again for, um, for the invite and being able to make that connection. Um, so just to kind of give you just a, a spin, because I, I really do want to hear the, the questions of the people that are, are in the room here. Um, um, you know, because I, I think it's important. Um, so one of the things that what we do as far as with our, our reentry is mainly we are an organization, Nehemiah Center for Urban Leadership. So there is another Nehemiah that's in uh, Milwaukee. So just in case um, no one knows that, I know there's some people that are here from Milwaukee. I'm not sure if it's their Nehemiah project or Nehemiah something else. I'm not, uh, I forgot. Um, but we are Nehemiah Center for Urban Leadership. Um, one of the, the things is we are an organization that been been around for the last 30 years, um, been doing reentry for, I want to say now about for the last 15 or, or so, um, have really been able to really hit on a lot of different things by being able to use people with lived experience um, and allow people. To, to grow that way and be able to not only in our organization but outside of our organization also um, some of our main points is that um, in, in our housing and also we do coaching and mentoring and then also um, in each step of this we also do job development and placement and being able to connect with different um, uh, employers and in, in the community but then also the way how we look at it as an organization is the fact that really trying to make sure that we're not just focusing on the individual, some of the, the most of the, the, the men and women that who we work with, um, they have families. So we also want to be able to have a family of, of approach um, uh, um, when we can to be able to make sure in our man up group um, that who was ran by um, Aaron Hicks, and then also um, in, our, in our housing to be able to be, um, uh, we have Rebecca Barber, who's really, um, really up front and being able to help guide um, individuals while they're there um, in our housing. But then also when there are different steps that may, we may have to take different approaches, um, you know, making sure that we're operating as a team, but not only as a team within our organization, but definitely working with the community um, to making sure that everyone has a part and everyone's being able to uplift the 
individuals as they're coming back home. Um, you know, by being able to have the community approach, not only has that been able to help us grow, but then also we allow um, people to know that, hey, it's not just us. This is a, this is a we thing. This is a, all of us that are in our community, in our state, to be able to really a, approach things um, that way. Also, the, another piece of what we do is advocacy. Um, myself and others also work inside of uh, the the court system and being able to um, talk with judges, have sit down with judges, as well as being to um, talk with uh, DAs uh, as well, um, just to be able to let them know that these individuals, that as they do come um, home, they do have the additional support. Um, one of the, the things, there were a lot of things that um, Window, hopefully I said your name correctly, had really hit on and we're, we're, we're almost the same organization in, in that uh, matter of being able to build the relationships to, um, to help people. Um, really, when they also being able to have that partnership with um, with FSET and the partnership is just pretty much there. Are, there are quite a few different um, FSET partners here in Dane County that who we work with uh, as well um, to be able to build those bridge um, to to bridge those um, those gaps that we know that what people need help with. Um, I'm trying to think is is there anything else that I'm missing? Um, yeah, there's not much. I guess besides that that i can really add as of right now um but just to kind of again i want to make sure that we're having a conversation because the way i look at this and, and even when i was talking with sean um i want to make sure that people are able to also talk i want to talk with you all um but i do want to make sure that we have the conversation hopefully we can really hone in on this conversation with the brothers and sisters that will be coming home um and when they come home and what are we going to do about it? how can we give them that additional support um again it's great that we have housing we are able to place people in jobs we are we, we do have those different connections but i I often, um, especially by getting the um, the email the other day, trying to just, I'm often thinking right now, especially in these situations right now, uh, with uh, Corona and because so many people are being laid off for jobs, especially unskilled um, labor uh, being laid off for jobs, how are we preparing ourselves for, um, for them as they come home? Um, and trying to look at and talk to different um, employers to be able to make sure that we, hopefully if anything, to be able to, because more than just one thing of being able to place someone into a job is also being to make sure they have the other essential needs that they need as far as a roof over their head um a roof over their head also the, the family support and then also um being able to uh, make the connection so they can make some um money and have some, put some money in their pocket as well the right way um and right now honestly even though we do have quite a bit of community support, I still feel as though, um, and if, you know, I, I, I still, I will say this um, personally, I still feel like I'm, I'm still wondering, are we, all of us, are we really truly ready for what's yet to come? Um, yeah, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, thank you, Wendell. So um, we'll open it up for um, questions. If folks have questions, uh, please um, put it in the chat and we'll try to answer uh, most of those questions. Um, my, I have a question and, 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 and I don't wanna you know, hog the mic, so please folks put your questions in the chat. But um, my question is, I have, a, I have a few colleagues that's up in the Northern part of Wisconsin that is doing this work um, and advocating on behalf of individuals um, to be released from jails and prisons. And I'm wondering if there, if you all know of any organizations in those parts of Wisconsin that will be able to assist in or service these individuals, or do you all um, have reach in your own organizations to um, assist these individuals? Um, well, I, I guess I'll go first. Um, since when went first, I was the first time. <laughs> Um, so I, I think it's more of really for, for us, it's more of just having the reach and being able to connect with organizations that, and that's if they're there in those smaller towns, there's not a whole lot of support. So that's why you, you still have a lot of men and women who are trying to either come to Madison or Milwaukee or, you, you know, Waukesha, um, you know, where there is some type of, of support but there's not enough. But we are trying to look at different ways. How, what can we do to either, if it's starting a program or, or, or some sort 
to be able to have the support in some of those smaller towns that are, or even connecting with some of the um, uh, the NAAA, because everyone doesn't have those those challenges, right? So, um, but reaching out to them to say, all right, is there ways of being able to connect um, and see if people are open to having having other different types of support groups and even reaching out to some of the churches as well. Um, some people are, are ready and some people, you know, um, are, are not. Um, and we have to be okay with that. But at the same time of being able to really, um, like for myself, I, I, I do share my personal number, but knowing that I don't have to do it all by myself um, um, is it, it, great that I can say, hey, you know what, I have other um, partners that who I can also refer to um, that are not just people who are based here in Madison. I totally agree with you. <clears throat> um, that the, the, the smaller communities definitely have some issues going on uh, and not having enough resources available and stuff, but there are still resources available in every community across the state of Wisconsin here and things. So we we try to be able to link individuals with those resources. I go to a lot of resource fairs, like a lot of prisons across the state of Wisconsin, talking about uh, not only our resources, but resources in surrounding communities as well. But um, unfortunately, I'm always approached by individuals who are returning to communities. I don't have any resources sitting on my table and stuff of, of, of things that are in their neighborhood. But I always encourage people to, to write to us to either um, send me an email, wendell at projectreturnmilwaukee.org, or to uh, write us a letter and stuff to find out the resources in the community. I can do a lot of research that individuals might not be able to do in the community and find resources for those individuals in those communities that they're returning to so we can be successful in, in getting the people linked up with the uh, um, resources so they can be successful with that reentry and stuff. We recognize that <clears throat> there's a healthy portion of individuals that aren't returning to areas that we have resources in, and we want to be able to accommodate those folks as well. So definitely want to be able to to, to address that as much as possible. And just to kind of add on to that too, because I, I think that uh, one of the things is, and I'm, I'm from where I'm, I'm hearing uh window say it is, is, is well is the fact of we kind of have the hey we're going to go ahead and knock on every door that we can just to be able to connect as much as, as possible and so that's i mean that is kind of like in some sense uh i don't want to say a, a claim of fame type of ordeal but in some sense it is um there's i mean we we truly try our best to make sure there is no stone that's left unturned so i think one of the the main things is as long as we're asking questions and and we're really asking some of the questions that some of our, our brothers and sisters are not or, or you know choose not to some of it is fear some of it is just like hey they 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 um they, they, they've been through this rodeo before and so um we're there as support we're there to be able to um to help navigate but then also more than anything with we're, we're there also to be um uh, um um an open ear just to kind of just hear what, where they're at where's their heart at because some people are still dealing with different uh, things as well so um that's again for, for me I, I feel like that's that's a that's another way how we have to navigate because it's more than just being able to place someone into a job there's a lot of people that may have had a job may have had housing but you know for whatever reason may have not been able to sustain it and so being able to also balance that out it, it, as well and not to say every it, and um to what my brother window has said, has said a little bit earlier it is really is i mean it's 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 a, it's a person's choice but I think our our I feel as though this is our job as a community to help people allow people who have been incarcerated to know that there's more than just one choice, right? You don't have to you don't have to go back to what you're used to. Let's try something new because what you what you are already used to, we already know the result to that. Let's try something different. And and a hey, and we we may have to try many things different and be okay with that. But you don't have to do it alone. It is, is um, be able to operate in, in community. We have a we have a question from um in the chat from brian um uh what kind of relationship do you have with your county sheriff your county sheriffs or local law enforcement uh, do they support you i'll jump um 
I'll jump on it. All right. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so for us, yes. Yeah, so most of it is, is similar to working with um, with employers. It is being able to knock on the doors of, of, of the sheriff's department and, and asking questions. And, you know, when there's some things that we may feel um, may not be right to be, be OK with asking those tough questions. But also even um, with the police department, even with um, Department of Corrections, there's some things that um, we've had some very hard and 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 and, and tough um um uh i, I guess it's, we've bumped heads on, on some things and, and 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 but at the same time i think of being able to say hey you know what this is your stance but that's the part that's the advocacy part that just like i show up to to court i show up to um a preliminary hearing i mean to be able to do that um as again by being someone that who has been incarcerated as well you know where i look at it is that i've been blessed to be a blessing so by being able to talk into things and also being able to provide the support that i wish i would have had that i think that has not only um helped the success of some of the, the, in the individuals in our program but then also being able to um have the real conversation with um, that they whether if it's Dane County Jail or if it's um, even the judges at times, um, and be okay with that. Again, I think you're going to hear quite honestly in the course of this evening in the next half an hour and stuff, Anthony and I agreeing quite a bit with each other on stuff uh, uh, as we're going through this. Um, when you're on the front lines. You want to have the relationships with the sheriff and with the uh, police department. But quite frankly, the more important relationships are with the people who have experienced incarceration and the people who have um, been there, done that type of re reality. Because those are the individuals who are the experts on the subject material. I could talk until I'm blue in the face and I am always going to be seen as, you know, I'm this white guy from Iowa who doesn't know crap of crap what's going on in Milwaukee. That's legit. I think people have got a, a fair say on that and stuff. But when I can bring in individuals, um, like I'm seeing some of the people who are uh, um, posting messages uh, uh, on this on this call and stuff like that, as well as some of the individuals that we've uh, built years of relationships with, when they talk about their experiences, it is so much more important and stuff. So while it is important to be able to build those relationships with law enforcement and sheriffs, in Milwaukee, it's more important to be able to build the relationships with people who have the, the no experience because the nice thing is where we are now compared to where we were 10 years ago uh, when Scott Walker was first elected governor of the state uh, of Wisconsin here. People might not necessarily agree with us completely and stuff, but we've got an administration now that is actually willing to hear what we're talking about that is willing to try to change the, the, the scope of what we're doing with mass incarceration. This is a wonderful opportunity to be able to really change the way in which we do uh, criminal justice in the state of Wisconsin. We've got an opportunity to be able to show people that we're better than what we've done in the past. We have for far too long fallen to the premise of tough on crime and we actually just had legislation that came through not too long ago that said we're, uh, there was tough on crime. This is not who we are as a state. We are better than this and we are to the point now where we can actually start moving this forward. So you don't want to necessarily use something like uh, COVID-19 coronavirus uh, as, a, as a principle to be able to move us forward in the state on this, but quite frankly, we've been so far behind the times that we'll take anything we've got to be able to get us to the point of where we can go on this. I'm very, very excited to see some of the efforts that are going through the state um, and some of the efforts around uh, reentry reform and stuff like that that we are actually uh, uh, pursuing and stuff. Um, I think we're going to see some real change here and stuff uh, within the next few months and stuff and things. And we're actually already beginning to see that. And I hope that it just continues and stuff. And I'm probably going to get lambasted for that and stuff. But I, I, that's just the way I see it and stuff in, you know, my time frame of, of looking at uh, reentry reform. Thank you, Wendell. Um, we, we have a lot of great questions in the chat. 
Um, and I'm, I'm also going to um, tap some of my colleagues that's on the call as well to um, answer some of these questions um, that um, Wendell and um, Anthony um, may not want to speak to necessarily. Um, but um, one question from Dawn is, what are we doing? Um, what are we doing to get them home? They are not getting the help they need because everything is shut down. They can get the programs they need being at home via the internet. And I know, Wendell, I had spoke with you earlier today about um, because COVID has shut everything down, um, what type of digital reentry services are you all providing for folks who may not be able to access you physically? So right. you that. Yeah. And I don't mean to cut you off there, Sean. So I, I, I'm very, this is one of the things I'm very, very excited about. It's the fact that um, and this, this happened prior to COVID-19 and coronavirus becoming a, a pandemic, even prior to it becoming an epidemic uh, 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 internationally here and stuff, is we've been working with uh, entities, um, universities, as well as other entities across the, the nation and stuff, try to streamline the way in which we do criminal justice uh, reform, as well as what, the way we do information distribution of resources that are available in the community and, and things. The thing is, what we've been doing for, for far too long and stuff, especially in the criminal justice system and in, in the institutions, is we put out resources, but immediately when the resources are put out into the libraries and into the institutions out there, they're out of date because the minute you print them, organizations don't provide those services anymore. We're trying to figure out a better way of distributing information so as people are aware of resources that are available in the community on a very timely fashion so that they can get the information right away and they can know what is available upon their release, the day that they're released, where they can go and get the resources that they're needed. So there's a, a program that is out of Chicago, uh, Illinois, called the Inside Out Network that we've been working with for probably about a couple of years now here and stuff like that to try to get them. Uh, and the Inside Out Network is a platform to be able to give individuals an opportunity prior to their release to identify needs that they're going to have upon release and find out resources in a timely fashion that is updated regularly of resources that are in the community. Well. About the same time that that was coming to Wisconsin, Milwaukee School of Engineering, as well as Marquette University and the U University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and, and many other partners in, in, this, in the city of Milwaukee and the region of Mo in the greater Milwaukee area and stuff, have started to develop a decarceration platform, which is a similar type of platform to be able to give people resources so that they could identify re uh, areas that they're needing resources in the community that can address those areas and that we can um, that they can identify us quicker. The great thing about partnering that with the Inside Out Network is that the Inside Out Network gives us as the provider network, as a as a uh, organization in the community, an ability to be able to know when the individual is released, what they're needing help with based on their self-identification and how we might be able to be in contact with them. So we don't have to be waiting for the individual to come to us to find resources, that we can actually be proactive as an organization and reach out to them and say, hey, recognize that you are need you identified you needed help with alcohol and drug use treatment and support programming, that you needed help with employment programming and stuff. We're Project Return, this is what we do. We'd love to be able to help you out with this. How can we connect with you to be able to provide those services? In the in, within a couple of days of them being released, so that they are they they know they have the resources in the community, so they can be successful. The other great thing about this network is that it is bringing into it, because of the connection with MSOE, Marquette, and UWM, is bringing in community-based organizations that are more more focused on advocacy efforts together and stuff, so that we can we can better partner together to fight the issues of mass incarceration in our community where we're comfortable, where we can based on our funding streams and stuff, and how we might be able to work to try change the trend of mass incarceration in the state of Wisconsin and move us uh, forward in the process. I'm very, very excited about this process. I think that it could be really a game changer for the state of Wisconsin 
uh, and particularly in southeast Wisconsin, but hopefully across the state as well. And once we begin to see how this platform can work and how can we really uh, uh, provide immediate changes in the community and stuff. So I'm, 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 I'm thrilled that I'm able to, to discuss this with you guys and stuff. And uh, your work, Sean, on it and stuff is, 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 is really, really key on it as well and things. So I, I implore people to like look into it a little bit further and stuff because I think we, this is the way in which we, we change our state, the way things are happening within our state. Window is, um, is the inside out, is that um, live in Wisconsin? Is that um, the network? Are they in Wisconsin? They're not in Wisconsin. Currently, they're in South Carolina. They're in Illinois. And I think that they're going to be starting up in Arizona very quickly. But within what we're anticipating is within the next three to six months that it will be up and live in Wisconsin. In that time frame, understanding the issues of COVID-19 and coronavirus, we are, MSOE has developed kind of a bare bones, a, a skeleton uh, aspect of this and stuff that we're hoping will be released here within the next week or two and stuff, which will get the resources out to the community so that people are return, who are returning in this short time frame will be able to know of resources in the community that they can get the, 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 the services that they need so they can be successful. Okay. Thank you, Wendell. Um, Anthony, you have something to add? Um, so I, I think uh, hopefully I heard your your, correct, your question correctly. Again, I was um, thinking about some st stuff at the same time. So I think really right now, and, and this is just me just really putting it out there, our work still has not stopped in some sense. Uh, and, and the fact, even though the courthouse currently right now is, is, is closed, but we're still meeting individuals um, in the community at times. We're still uh, um, in meeting individuals who may come to our emergency housing. Um, we're still meeting individuals who, who need housing. Um, and, and so, and because of that, it's one of those things of, of where it is as much as we, because everyone is not, was well, a couple of different things. Everyone is not gonna be able, that may not have a phone. Everyone may not have a, a way of being able to um, uh, communicate um, via Zoom or, or, or whatnot. So this is all the things that are, they, they become challenges or, and, 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 and frankly, some people may not even know how, how to be able to, to work those devices uh, as, as well. So yes, do those things become um, challenges, yes. But at the same time, I feel like, you know, we are all trying to look at different ways of being able to support. This is something that is very new for all of us. And, um, you, you know, um, um, and also being able to um, support the men, the men that may end up reaching out to us from um, from the prison or even um, Dane County Jail, um, or that we know that are coming back to this community and some that we don't know is coming back to this community. Um, it is, it is, it's, it's we're, we're, we're trying to, um, on our end of things, um, being, being as careful as, as possible um, by being able to have some health staff that um, that is also who can kind of help guide us and give us the right direction in that as well. Um, so yeah, so again, it is really, it's, it's, it's a challenge. I'm not gonna sit up here and um, front act or, or whatever, however you wanna call it. Um, it's all, like everything is all, all okay, okay, cause it's a challenge cause I have, a, I have a team that I have to worry about as well, as well as myself. Um, so my team is out there, I'm out there, you know, um, there's an old saying that we, we say, there's no big eyes or little use. And, 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 and in saying that, you know, we're all trying to not only navigate what the system is, uh, um, what the system has in front of us, but then also try to um, navigate what is what is happening in this new um, way of being able to assist people that um, at times don't necessarily, um, of course, they may see or may may see or not see what's on, on the news, but is because it's a, it's a new way of navigation for everyone. Thank you, Anthony. Um, we're going to jump real quick to this question from. Um, Count from the counselor, um, Allison. <laughs> um, thank you for this question. This is a pretty long question, um, but I'm gonna tap Molly to answer that question. But the question is, um, I am a criminal defense attorney in Milwaukee. My immediate concern is assisting incarcerated persons who could and should be released ASAP. Given what I understand is coming in the next few weeks, 
as far as the apex of the expected disease curve. I am a private defense attorney in Wisconsin. The problem is how do we identify and advocate for people who are serving mostly yeah. misdemeanor sentence in local jails who could and should be released? Could you guys hear me? Um, I'm sorry, you, you broke up because someone's uh, mic was turned on. Um, okay. Um, so the problem is how do we identify and advocate for people who are serving mostly misdemeanor sentences in local jails and could and should be released? Wisconsin jails, the state of DOC will be overwhelmed by the pandemic if we cannot reduce these numbers dramatically now, Monday. Right now, the efforts being made are all in the hands of the jail administrators and the DAs, not the incarcerated persons themselves. Is anyone working on this or interested in working on this? And I'm going to pass the mic to my colleague, Molly Collins, who just was on a phone call with some of these system players and will be able to inform us. Molly? Yeah, sure thing. Um, I'm Molly Collins. I'm the advocacy director at the ACLU. Uh, I work with Sean and Emilio and Melissa and David and a bunch of the other folks on this call. Um, I wanted to just step back a little bit to say like uh, from the beginning of the pandemic, the ACLU, as Sean mentioned, has sent letters to sheriffs and to the DOC and been trying to engage folks in um, decarceration uh, immediate and quickly and as quickly as we can because we know that this is a uh, a problem that needed to be addressed two weeks ago. Um, the Secretary of Corrections put out a statement yesterday saying that they released um, over a thousand folks uh, who were on parole holds. That's not enough. Um, it is nowhere near enough. Sheriffs have been approaching this in a very piecemeal way, which is um, great for the sheriffs who have decarcerated significant parts of their jails, but it's still not enough and we are lacking the leadership from the governor's office and from the administration and from the legislature and everyone who's involved to really move what we need to move forward. So we have um, been asking all of our members and supporters to call the governor, to call the legislature, to make sure that your, your all the voices are heard. Um, and then also we've been engaged in conversations with the DOC about a massive resentencing project. Um, and so that is something, Allison, that I'm absolutely um, interested in talking about. Um, earlier this week, uh, the secretary uh, told me that he felt like they could prepare a list of folks who we could start moving on resentencing um, very quickly. Um, you know, they are working with the State Public Defender's Office and the Wisconsin Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers to try to make sure folks can get representation very quickly and that we can move these things forward. I still don't think resentencing is fast enough, frankly, but it's, um, it's a strong move um, and it will help um, many people move for, through the system quickly. Um, but we're worried about all of the pieces that go with that, including access to the courts. Um, and so it's not a problem that we have figured out a solution to, other than to say folks need to just keep calling the governor, have your friends and neighbors and anyone you know on Facebook to call the governor, call the legislature, put pressure on them that this rises to the top of the problems that they feel like they need to deal with in this moment. Thank you, Molly. Um, we have a question from um, David. Let me pull it up here. It's a lot of information in the chat, but we will compile all of this and get it to you all via email. Um, so David asks the question. Wow, I didn't know that we're this active in the chat. Um, do you know, <laughs> do you know a federal or state funding that has been allocated to, dedicated to individuals releasing from incarceration and transitioning into this era of COVID-19? If so, could you identify where to access those resources? Uh, Wendell, Anthony, or any of my colleagues who may have this information as well. 
currently I'm unaware of anything as far as funding um, right now, but um, to my understanding, there may be some stuff that may be coming down the pipeline just, but, but at the same time, it's not soon enough. So, so that's the, I, I, this is just the way I look at it. I, nothing's happening as fast as we need it to happen. The individuals that who are coming home are coming home soon. If they come home and if people do not have, um, I see someone that said that there's some emergency funds. It, well, there are, oh, I'm sorry. I feel like even with those emergency funds, and I don't know about, I'm not sure where that person is um, from, it, it's still not enough for what as many people as they're actually talking about releasing. And it's not enough to be able to assist the agencies to be able to help the people either. So that becomes that, that also, that also becomes another challenge, right? So um, if you have um, a, man or woman that who is if if you have a woman that's coming back home to her her children and trying to provide a family and right now for some people they're they're coming they are coming home to nothing so it becomes it becomes another uh, another whole challenge of all right how are we making sure that this person is staying on the right path at the same time where where it's not like hey i can go and get a dishwashing job or a cleaning job or, or, or something just to at least start me off with so these are all the other different challenges as, as well so with the hopes of hey if i can get into this factory then um um that's that, that's a blessing but that's still how many other people because we, now we're talking about another challenge that's happening now too because there's a lot more people that are being laid off so now it's our, our folks that who have, who have been incarcerated that are coming home. Now we're again, um, now, now again, we're also um, kind of going against the people that who are skilled laborers and, and so on and so forth, because now they're trying to jump into those jobs as well, unless they are connected with agencies like, like ours, um, talking about me, uh, myself and Emilio, um, that, um, I'm sorry, not Emilio, I forgot the brother's name. Oh, Jesus. You give me <laughs> credit for anything you want, so long as it's good. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right in front of me, Emilio. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but, um, um, so, you know, I mean, it just, it just really becomes, uh, man, it's, it's crazy. It's, right now, I just feel like as much, even though we, we made some uh, movement going forward, but there's still a lot more work that still needs to be done. And we need to actually create um, some type of, another type of pipeline to be able to help individuals as they're coming home from prison. Cause I'm not gonna sit up here and act like we have all the answers. Yeah, there's some stuff that we can do and connect and, and, and so on and make some things happen, but there is so still so much more. Are we really, are we really prepared as a state, uh, you know what I mean, um, to really help the men and women that who are coming home? Yeah, I totally agree with that and stuff. I, I think um, even some of the things that are put out there in the stimulus bills and stuff are restricted to individuals who have uh, uh, been incarcerated or who have uh, uh, faced charges or uh, had to plead guilty to things and stuff. It's just um, we are continuing as a society to demean and uh, um, undermine the redemptive spirit of individuals in our community and stuff and saying that they can't be better than what they have been. And I flat out disagree with that. I think that we're, we're all better than the worst thing that we've ever done. We all have the ability of, uh, of being redeemed. And uh, there's so many avenues that put up roadblocks in, in, in those efforts and stuff. I have, and I've said this many a time, I've, I've I've absolutely been blessed for 20 years to be able to work with the formerly incarcerated population of the, of the great, uh, greater Milwaukee area here and stuff. And I've, and I've said this many times too, I learned, I, I went to four years of undergraduate college and stuff. I learned more in my first week of project return than I learned the four years of college from the individuals uh, who have experienced incarceration who have lived through it, who have come off the other end, who have been successful. I am absolutely amazed that we as a society do not uh, um, hold these people up as standards that, of what people can be and what success is. We, we are better than this and stuff, and we need to be able to open up opportunities for individuals who have been incarcerated and who have been formerly incarcerated. And I'm thrilled with the fact that every day at Project Return, 
for 20 plus years here and stuff like that that I've learned every day from people who have experienced the system and it's made me a stronger individual in the process as well. And I, I, I firmly believe that it's made other individuals stronger as well through this process. We need to figure out a way that these individuals can be um, even more put up and, 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 and lifted up so that they can be the, the, the pillars of our community that they already are, but that the rest of our community actually recognizes it as well. And I think that COVID-19 and the coronavirus is an opportunity that we could be, be able to do that, but um, the government for whatever reason, whatever their mindset is on things and stuff is constantly putting up the roadblocks and stuff. And we have Project Return and I know at Nehemiah and other organizations across the state of Wisconsin are really trying to work to take those roadblocks away. ACLU's wonderful opportunity with they're wonderful with what they're doing with the Smart Justice Program and stuff like that to try to eliminate those barriers and making it so that those individuals can be um, the leaders that we are that they already are in our community. So um, for those of you who are on the call, who are falling into those, uh, um, the demographics of the formerly incarcerated who are returning, I, I, I applaud you for everything that you're doing. I applaud you for being on this phone call. I applaud you for uh, everything that you're doing in our community. And I'm thrilled to be able to work with each and every one of you. And uh, I think that we're going to be stronger coming out, out of coronavirus and coming out of COVID-19 than we were going into it. Thank you, Wendell. Um, we're coming up on the 7.30 hour, and um, there's a lot going on in the chat. We're going to um, compile all of that and send it out to folks um, in, the, in the email. Um, I'm going to pass the mic to my colleague, Emilio De Torre, um, to talk about some of the most effective action steps that folks can take. Um, in addition to that, I think he's going to um, upload a bunch of links um, into the chat for folks as well. And again, we will um, send that to everyone via email. Um, I wanna thank Wendell. I wanna thank you, Anthony, um, both for spending some time with us tonight to talk about um, re-entry. Um, this is very important that we provide these services to these men and women who are re-entering our society. Um, and it's unfortunate that this is, it, it, had to, it had to be a pandemic for us to talk about releasing folks back into the community. And um, this changes the conversation around mass incarceration as we go forward, because if folks are able to be released um, as a result of a pandemic, then you ask the question, should they have been there in the first place? So I think the, um, this pandemic has given us a new insight on mass incarceration. And I look forward to working with you all as well as you know my colleagues, we look forward to working with you all going forward on how we can decarcerate the state of Wisconsin um, and Emilio. Thank you, Sean, and, and, and thank you, Anthony and Wendell and everybody else that's uh, sharing things. I'm not going to get too deep into um, all of the actions we can take, but I wanna arm you with things that you can take home to your friends that need these services immediately. Obviously, and I'm sure all of you have, call and email the governor, call your local sheriff, call your local DA, and call your county health department. The county health department has a lot of say over how your, uh, your jail should be uh, treating folks that are currently staying there. And you can pull out this extra muscle. And to link to that muscle, I wanna draw you your attention to the chat where I just posted way too many resources in uh, as much sense as I could make them. But one of the most important things you're gonna see right there is uh, an article from the New England Journal of Medicine which talks, which came out just last night, which talks about flattening the curve for incarcerated populations. At least in the United States, this is the preeminent um, journal of medicine that all medical professionals adopt. And this resource was sent to me by no fewer than um, three Wisconsin MDs today. One, Dr. Monica Vasudev, who's been on these town halls we've been holding almost uh, nightly. And this will arm you with science so that when um, they push back with BS, you have stats and statistics from folks who have been doing uh, healing people for as long long as uh, these other folks have been harming people uh, and harming people that are currently incarcerated. Uh, in addition to that, I've listed the Project Return uh, Milwaukee website and the Nehemiah, the correct Nehemiah, the one and only true Nehemiah and Madison's website so you can get involved in uh, Anthony's programs. Uh, the DOC has a list for COVID and coronavirus and I suggest that you follow and take a look at that. 
Um, some of the other resources you're going to see uh, are actually the FSET program that uh, Wendell and Anthony both spoke about. If you're in areas that aren't Milwaukee or Dane County, you need to um, find out how you can get this type of employment and training for your returning uh, loved ones. Uh, and then I listed a lot of other things. Sadly, I don't know that there are federal uh, or state resources of, of any uh, importance that are coming down the pipeline immediately. Most of that is local. And if you look on Facebook or other virtual communities, you'll see many um, local heroes stepping up into this. I posted a couple here from Milwaukee, Ayula Mutua, Milwaukee, um, some other local ones, you can find those. I know Christopher Zahn listed the one that's uh, up in uh, Brown County in his neck of the woods. Melissa listed a couple. Uh, as also somebody with long-term sobriety, I listed AA and NA, the statewide uh, groups, because you're going to need those resources. Not only is it traumatizing to just return from uh, living an institutionalized life and come out into the world, but you're in, you know, this horrible pandemic scenario. There's all sorts of stuff. You're being released, but you're being put somewhere. It's weird. You've got a lot of additional stress. You're going to need those support groups to help you. Uh, and then I listed the CDC, the U.S. Department of Health and a variety of other uh, links here that will, uh, that will, oops, I see some of them got cut off. I'm gonna go back in there and list them, but um, there are many additional links that you're gonna wanna follow up on, not the least of which uh, that I'm gonna share are also uh, mental health and non-crisis emotional support lines, national suicide prevention lines, um, other substance abuse and mental health lines, crisis lines, uh, parenting lines, here I found the link, uh, education lines. A lot of you are now not only concerned about your uh, returning loved ones, but are also attempting to uh, homeschool, are attempting to uh, guide. Oh, I see why it cut me off. I can't post quite as much as I attempted to post before. Um, so I'll do it in several chunks and we'll make sure we email it to everybody. Are uh, you trying to homeschool? You're trying to cope with different things. You may be stressed out. There may be issues of domestic violence and you don't want to involve law enforcement in that, but you want assistance. We're going to link to all of those resources because uh, we need to compile them. We can't just rely on uh, overburdened systems, especially those that can text. There are unique concerns that uh, returning LGBTQ and two-spirit uh, folks have coming back, especially into a home that may not... Um, the understanding of who they are and, and what they need to survive. And we're going to list those resources as well. Uh, and we really want you as local folks who are specialists in your areas to keep sharing those. I see we only have about a minute. Before I turn it back to Sean or jump into any other questions, I want to say that I began this link. We've been doing a lot more uh, virtual organizing and virtual communications with folks. Those of you who are directly impacted or are local leaders in working um, with these types of solutions, whether uh, you are organizing groups like David Carlson in the Eau Claire area to go meet with your sheriff and DA and your health uh, department, or um, organizing demonstrations in the Milwaukee area like uh, Ben is doing to show the system that we are still not pleased with the scant offerings they're giving us. Uh, we'd like you to link up with us on Telegram so you can share that information directly and we get this stuff in real time. So when a doctor texts us and says, this is the latest science, and this list of thousands of national doctors are demanding that federally we decarcerate people, you have that the second we do. Thanks, Sean. Thank you, Emilio. Thank you, everyone, again, for joining us tonight. Uh, we're going to be having these weekly virtual town halls uh, with a different subject line. Um, and also, you know, email us or, you know, e even put in the chat, you know, in the next minute or two, some of the subjects that you all want to talk about, some, some of the things that you want to hear. Um, we're, we're doing this to make sure that we continue to inform folks on what's happening um, on the county and, 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 and state level, local level. Um, we're making sure that we continue to engage everyone around this issue because this is an issue that in, uh, impacts all of us directly or indirectly. And I think that um, we are the best advocates for men and women who are currently um, in cages throughout Wisconsin. If we're not raising our voice on their behalf, then who knows what will happen to them. Um, this is a human issue and we need to continue to emphasize that to our local um, and state officials that they need to do everything in their power to minimize the risk of these men and women who are um, in our um, prisons and jails. Um, continue to you know tune in 
Uh, we're going to continue to have these conversations. We're going to continue to apply pressure on all who are concerned. Um, and yeah, um, I know many of you all have probably have been in, on Zoom meetings and teleconferencing all day, so I won't hold you any longer, but we will send you all of this information via email. Um, and again, thank you for your time. Um, I want to thank my colleagues on the call. Uh, it's too many to name. I want to thank our coalition partners. I see many of you on the call as well. Um, and we look forward to continue to work with you all and continue to get the word out about uh, mass incarceration and advocating on behalf of those within our prison system here in the state of Wisconsin. Um, good night, everyone. Um, have a great rest of your night. And um, I look forward to us continuing this conversation.